friends, Lori here. I'm here today to start the process of doing all my year in review and my year wrap-up videos and then my future videos for 2019, my planning videos. So the first one up is the top 10 books that I read in the genres of fantasy and science fiction. Um, I will have another video coming up momentarily about my top five contemporary nonfiction and graphic novels that I read. Um, but that's a different video. On average, I experienced read or listened to 152 books this year at the time of this recording. It is still, it is only December 14th, so it's possible I might read a couple more books and some of them might be so amazing that I might wind up adding them to this list. If that does happen, I will have an addendum to this video. I'm going to have a bunch of video guys, videos for you guys this week and I will be pre-recording so you guys could have them for a while. Um, so be sure to keep a nose out for those. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to give you guys the top 10 science fiction fantasy books that I've read. Uh, let's get into it. These books, if you've been watching me all year, these books are no surprise. So sit back, relax, enjoy, grab some popcorn or some Christmas cookies and enjoy. Um, the first book I'm going to talk about, and these are in no particular order as of yet. They're just in the order I read them. And at the end, I'll choose like my top book of the year. Is... The Cruel Prince by Hallie Black. This book really was amazing. I've heard amazing things about this from Super Space Chick and Alexa Loves Books and I don't know if Reagan read it, but I know that those two girls read it and adored it. And I was really hesitant going into it because I've had really mixed experience with fairy books. This book was so well crafted. I love the world. I love the characters. I love the plot. What Holly Black does really good in her writing is she really creates such, like, such fun, um twists and you can never predict the twists and the twists always are wait until the last second and then they catapult you into book two which is a really good book when the series is complete because then you could just read them back to back but when you're reading them as they come out it's a little bit of a torture so cruel is a good word to describe the ending of this book I thought it was very very cruel um We'll talk about Wicked King later, and that's a totally different word. Um, but I overall really liked it. The pacing was really interesting. I love the characters. The world building was like the stand out to me in this book, and I was just so captivated by it. But yeah, this is the first five-star read that I read in the first book that made this list. Now this one I really liked, but I know that a lot of people didn't like it, but it still made my top ten list, and that is Zenith by Sasha Elberg and Lindsay Cummings. I really like this book and I've been on a science fiction kick recently like in this year I've read a lot of science fiction books um I'll be curious if I reread it how I feel now but when I read it I was really captivated by it I thought that it was a really easy science fiction book to read and by easy I mean something that was like easy to read it was super easy to understand it wasn't as complicated like um, the Fractured Light series by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner, that would be like a very high level fantasy, like science fiction series that I think you needed to like have a lot of background for and it was like a little bit heady at points. This book was just super fun. I love that there was a female crew. I loved all the different perspectives that you got. Um, yeah, I just really liked it. I, um, I found it to be such a compelling read and I was really intrigued by it. it um, Another book that could go with this as well is Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. Um, I tried to keep this video short, but both Zenith and Heart of Iron had very similar feels to me. And Heart of Iron, I wanted the end to be a little bit more fleshed out, but we are getting that book this year, so I'm super excited about that. But overall, I really liked it. I, I know that this book got a lot of hate, a lot of hate. Um, and I don't think it was a like necessary needed hate either. I just think people were being a little bit cruel to it, and I try to stay away from author bashing just because I don't think it's nice. Um, but I actually really liked it. So if you were staying away from it for like, oh my god, it's so horrible, I would give it a chance. If you're really like hesitant, I always say grab it from a library or grab it from a friend. But I really liked it. So I'm excited to see where book two goes and to see what they wind up working on independently. I know Lindsay Cummings just had a baby and Sasha's working on another project. But I'll be curious to see what this series is like and how it continues. But overall, this book impressed me enough to make my top ten list. So the next book that I'm going to chat about is another New York City Comic Con pick from last year that I borrowed from my friend Sarah. I really do need to get a book of this from my own shelves. I'm working on that. Um, is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christie. This book was a very dark um, Ariel and Eric retelling, and I really was captivated by it. I really enjoyed it. So this book follows two basic characters, and basically the lead boy is trying 
to find a siren to kill and the lead girl is trying to find the prince so they're basically both trying to find each other and both trying to kill each other um and it was just so just so well done like I really loved it I was captured by it but the ending was like a little bit rushed but it was like a really solid standalone novel like definitely is a standalone I don't think that there could be more but I just loved it it was a very very bloodthirsty read and I was really like um captured by both characters like I was equally invested in the in the male protagonist storyline and the female protagonist storyline I thought that they were just really well done the story was so captivating the world was so fun I really hope Alexandra Christo writes more books in the future because I'll definitely be tuning in I just really liked it I was I was I was instantly captured by the story it's still I've read this in like April and I'm still talking about it um and also another honorable honorable mention is Sea Witch by Sarah Henning, which was um, an Ariel retelling and an Ursula retelling. And I really like that book as well. That was also another, like, really fun um, retelling that I read. Um, it just didn't quite make my list, but it was really good. So if you're looking for two kind of similar Ariel and Ursula retellings, I would definitely check that one out well. But I really like To Kill a Kingdom, and that's why it's made my list. The next book I am going to chat about today is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. And I got this book also at New York City Comic Con last year. And I really went into it super excited. I love Lost Princess myths or Princesses That Lose Them Kingdom. That's just a trope that I really like. And this book was no different. But the one thing that was really surprising about this book, and I think Laura Sebastian says it best, you don't ever see a character like Theodosa or Theo. You just don't. She's a very unique character. She's not physically strong. She's not like, you know, she's not a fighter, but she's very intelligent. And I think that her intelligence really made this book stand out to me. And I was like, oh my god, this character is awesome. She's very, very quick thinking. And I think she's it's just it was fascinating. Her as a character was really unique. Definitely it's a slow burn story. Like I would say like probably about 100, 200 pages in it really does pick up but you definitely have to become emotionally invested in it this is another book that's very similar to like um, Ever um Everless that I read last year but it did come out this year I just read it really um I just read it really early so I will talk about that eventually um but I really like this book I thought the plot was really interesting I love the world building in these books I just thought it was really well done the characters were super interesting, and I just really fell hard for these characters. I know that we're getting Lady Smoke soon, which I will definitely be checking out, but the standout for this book for me was definitely Theo. Theo. Theo? Yeah. Theo. I loved how they handled the taking over of her kingdom, and I loved how she was basically a puppet in the kingdom. I just thought that stuff was all interesting. I just really like this book, and I'm was really excited that we that we are getting a book too and I'll be super, super curious to see where this book heads next so be sure to check out the sequels that I'm most excited for that will be another video that I'm posting soon but yeah Ash Princess definitely had to make this list the next book I'm going to chat about in this video is Obs Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff this is the last book in the um the Illumini and Genema, Genema series and I love this book the one thing I really loved about this book was that it also it 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 introduced new characters that we needed because this book follows two different characters than the other four but it was able to balance their story with the other characters so well and I think that's largely because this book is written in like such a unique format if you haven't heard about this book you should definitely read Illuminae which is the first book um I just was loved I love this book I thought that the end of this book was really like a love letter to the fans because I think it just tied everything up so nicely and I just was in love with it I love the way that the book this book was formatted I love the characters I thought that it had a nice balance between the new characters and the old characters and everyone had their just desserts the only thing I really liked about this book was that these characters were immediately connected to the previous characters they all had interconnections and these were actually former boyfriend and girlfriend which I thought was even more interesting it just was so well done and I really really love this book I thought that it was just so well done I actually listened to most of it as an audiobook but read it when I could because this format is just awesome it was definitely one of my favorite reads of the year and I really hope that more authors and publishing companies adopt this unique format because for me it was definitely a highlight 
Um, I loved how it had a full cast recording, like how you could hear everything in the background. I just was really impressed with it. And I really hope that if you have not considered reading this series, you definitely give it a shot. This series is a little bit bloodthirsty at points, but it's definitely worth the read. A top 10 book list is not, it's just not a list without Rick Riordan. So his book, um, Magnus Chase, The Gods of Asgard, Ship of the Dead, had to make this list. I really, really enjoyed this book. I thought it was probably my least favorite of the series as a whole, but I still think it was such a fun read. This book was so diverse. I love this series so much. I think that it dealt with a lot of interesting topics that I don't think that middle grade books often deal with. Um, you know, LGBTQ relationships, um, transgendered relationship, like transgender characters. Um, it just was d diversity. Like, there's so much diversity in this book. The one thing I liked about this book was that it gave all the side characters, like, a moment to shine. And you've been with them for two bucks. I just really loved it. It was such a fun action adventure story. I thought that it was a solid conclusion. I really hope we get to see these characters again in the future. Um, I love the Percy Jackson tie back because we actually got to see Percy in this book and a couple of the other characters. Um, I really need to read Burning Maze. It's definitely on my list. Um, but I really like this book and I'm hopeful that we will get to see these characters in some way, shape, or form in the future because Rick Riordan has a tendency to come back to characters. And I really like the series, so hopefully we do, maybe in the future. Um, but yeah, so that is my thoughts on um, the, the Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan. So the next book that made my top 10 list is Wild Card by Mary Lou. I really loved War Cross last year by Mary Lou. I think I gave that book like four and a half stars. This book was better than that book and I loved it. I was really captured by it. Haven't read a, I haven't read a lot of video games book in my life, but this book just easily captured me. It had a great balance between the gameplay, the political intrigue, and the dystopian societies that I really like. And I think I said this in my Warcross review when I talked about it, when I talked about this like earlier in the year when I read it. This book and what Mary Lou is able to do in her writing is create such a diverse novel that is just so seamless. And as someone that works with students and as someone that works with kids, the diversity in this book is perfect, and I think that it was just so well done, and I'm really impressed by it. Um, I have heard, a, like, a little bit of criticism for this book, saying it wasn't a solid ending, it was too open-ended, and I actually really like the ending. I thought that it set, it could, you know, sometimes when you read dystopian novels, not everything ends with a clean, like, bow. It just doesn't, and I think that that's what this showed. It shows that this world, how this story ended, um could lead to so much more. You could even do like a sequel series set in this world and I would totally read it because I thought the world is so interesting. This book was kind of like um book four in Harry Potter like when it expanded the world and you learned all these new things. That's kind of what Wild Card done and I found that to be super compelling. I like the mystery in this book. I like the relationships that that were developed. I can't say enough good things. If you have not checked out this duology you definitely should it definitely was one of my top books of the year and I can't wait to see what Mary Lou does next the next book that wound up making my list and again none of my lists my year review lists are ever the same without Alexandra Bracken because I love her as an author she's probably one of my favorite authors of all time met her several times um but I was so excited for Darkest Legacy the Darkest Mind series is probably one of my favorite dystopian series of all time and when we I knew we were going to get another book set in this world. I was so excited. I was even more thrilled when I learned it was Zoo's story. Um, but yeah, I love this book. This book was so well done. And um, in the times that we're living in, we're in 2018, about to be in 2019, I was so captured by this book because I think it handled, ooh, my book fell. Um, I think it handled like the refugee issue which is such a prevalent issue in our lives right now in such like an easy way for kids to understand. And I've also seen this in a lot of media recently, like the TV show Gifted with the Mutants. And this book is like with Mutants as well. Um, but it just handled it. And I felt like I think that it was just done so well. And it really was like a really interesting look into like the refugee crisis, but with powers and magic. And I just... I really loved it. I thought the mystery was so compelling. I loved being in Zoo's head. Zoo was such a fun character. And I really loved being in Ruby's head. But Zoo's head was so interesting. 
And if you had read the previous series, this is like a little spoiler, Zoo didn't speak for the first three books, basically. She was basically mute. Um, but to see her get her own voice and to see what had how that changed her was really interesting. I loved how this book created a new trio of characters, but also gave you tiebacks to Liam and Zoo and everyone else. I would highly recommend that before you read this, you should definitely have read the previous series and you should definitely read the Through the Dark novellas. I'm hopeful that my book club will wind up doing this for um, a re a, um, a re a reread. So hopefully we'll get to do that as well eventually. But yeah, really good, really impressed five stars. And I'm really hopeful, hopeful that eventually Alexandra Bracken will return to this world because it was definitely one of my favorite reads of the year. The last two books I'm going to chat about in this video aren't actually out yet, but I did read them in 2018. Um, the first one is Wicked King by Holly Black. And I got this from ALA from my friend Jen. And I read it in about August. And here is a picture if you haven't seen it. Okay, let me just start this video off by saying I love being a book reviewer. I love reading books early, but the one downside to being a book reviewer is that you get these books so early and then you have to wait like potentially two years to read the next book in the series and this is gonna kill me. I loved Cruel Prince. It made this list. I was so excited for Wicked King. I just was like, oh my god, I need this book and I got it and I was so excited. Um, this book was another game changer and I just love the character of Jude so much and it just was really a fast-paced adventure story. Definitely was fairies but you know the fairy version of Game of Thrones which I think I've said before and I think it's even pitched as that. Um, I love the world building. I thought the world building is expanded in this novel. I definitely need to read this book again when I get it <laughs> um, because I read it like as like a fast-paced read and I definitely want to reread it. Um, but let me just say this. Um, the ending is devastating. Like the the ending literally almost made me hit Zordeva Cordova in the head with my book because I was at a book signing when I finished reading it and I have a picture of me reading the book and my mouth is like, at the end. So it is definitely an ending that you're just like, oh, now I have to wait so long for it. So good. I really cannot wait to see where the book ends. And Jude is just such a interesting character. Like she's just really interesting to read about. I love being in her head and I'm really excited to read Queen of Nothing when it comes out in about 2020, I guess at this point. Um, but yeah, I, this book definitely had to make this list. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely reading Wicked King again in 2019 because I will have at this point I'll probably have two copies of it so it will definitely get read but yeah that's my short version thoughts on Wicked King um and I'm gonna do a non a spoiler discussion when I finish rereading it and that will probably happen in the first half of 2019 so that's my thought on Wicked King by Holly Black and the last book well my last top 10 book of 2018 that I read is Devouring Grey by Kristen Christina Lynn Herman um, and this book came out, will, will be coming out in April. I've got an arc of it at New York City Comic Con. And I actually got to meet her twice, I think. Um, I really like this book. And I really have had massive issues with Twilight. This book has the good Twilight vibes, and I really, really liked it. Basically follows this girl named Violet Saunders. And after her sister is killed, she and her mom wind up returning to this town where her mom grew up in. Um, and it's, it's revealed that she is a protector with all these founding families of this town and she has to protect them and they all have magical powers and she is one of the founder kids. And when something happens and there is something that's basically killing people, she goes on an adventure to, to try to figure out what is going on. Um, it definitely is a mix between, um, like... Um, you know, Raven Boys meets Stranger Things meets Twilight a little bit. And I just really liked it. I mean, if you're definitely, this should definitely be on your TBR for 2019. It was just so well done. I flew through this book and I really liked it. I thought that the diversity of the characters were really interesting. I love how there was a bunch of different characters. We got, we got a, we got, we got several different characters' point of views. Um, I think the drawing in the final book will be even more beautiful, but I definitely had massive Stranger Things vibes, and I really, really enjoyed it. So those are the top 10 science fiction and fantasy books that I read in 2019. Be sure to tell me in the comments what are some of your top, top science fiction and fantasy books that you read in 2019. 
Um, and yeah, we, we could talk about it in the comments. Um, I'm also going to be posting pictures of these on my Instagram. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.